Now, my main account has been, let's call it simmering on the back burner for a while now. I have been playing it a fair bit, but I just really have not progressed some of these really slow, boring skills. Yes, you can all say it, I shouldn't have left mining agility, runecrafting, till last, uh, my mistake. So I haven't been skilling a whole lot, but we have been doing a bit of PVM on the side, and thanks to a Christmas miracle, I finally got the courage to try out arguably the most difficult content in the game, the Inferno. So over the Christmas holidays, I was somehow able to pull a second Twisted Bow. It's it's so insane for a couple reasons. This one is worth double my first one, which is the craziest part. And I got it in a duo, which is by far the biggest drop I've ever gotten. So I was able to sell the Twisted Bow for a bit more than 1.5 bill, which means we got a healthy 784 mil split. Absolutely insane. So I don't want to sell my Shadow, but I think I might just be able to afford the Twistable alongside the Shadow if we sell off a good bit of my luxury items, let's call them. Okay, so I've pulled things up from the bank. We have a Saturated Heart, a Void Waker, nearly 900 mil cash, Missouri, although I probably want to keep that, Dragon Enter Crossbow, which we're using for raids, one of these mahogany planks that I bought I don't even know, like four years ago at this point. Never ended up getting my construction in the 99. They've been sitting there doing nothing, gathering dust for so long. So we're going to sell those two. So we're pretty damn close. I think if we sell off most of this, we should have enough. There it is. The Twistable. We just had to buy right back. Unfortunately, lost five mil to taxes, but that's okay. It's like, what the? <laughs> Got the Void Waker there. It's like invisible. Okay, we're going to trade this Void Waker in probably for a piece of Missouri. And there we go, we got both the mega rare items, both the most expensive PVM items anyway. Alright, so this is what kind of originally sparked the idea for the Inferno. We got our Twisted Bow back, which means we can realistically go do it. Sure, you can do it with way less, but historically, you know, I'm not the best PVMer, and I think having the best weapon in the game for this is going to help out a lot. I might not be the best, but I can buy my way out of my problems. <laughs> okay, I've never done this before, but we're going to sacrifice our Fire Cape to get access to the Inferno. Yes, sacrifice it. I have no idea what I'm doing. We're gonna have to learn pretty much everything from the ground up here. I mean, we just did a fire cape run for a, <laughs> a bit of a warm up, but now it's time, I guess, for the main event. Now, when it comes to learning the Inferno, there are a ton of different strategies, monsters, tiles, and mechanics to learn to be able to get your Infernal Cape. Now, going into this, I have no clue about any of it, but today I wanna take you through my journey of learning Obviously, this is not meant to be an Inferno guide. There's way better people out there to teach you. But coming from someone who didn't know anything beforehand, I think can be useful. Okay, so let's start off by looking at the gear I'm going to be bringing. Now, primarily the Inferno, for most people, you're going to be killing almost everything with ranged. So ranged DPS is the highest priority. After that, we're going to be prioritizing defenses and prayer bonus. And then finally, we're bringing a small mage switch. I don't know what it is about Inferno gear, but it looks like you are thrift shopping at the most expensive thrift shop in the world. So we're bringing the Justicier face guard, just for the defensive bonuses. We have the Nightmare Staff and the Crystal Shield, alongside the Ancestral Robe Top and the Occult Necklace. That's going to be our Mage Switch. We're going to be camping the Kirill's Bottoms, although if I get fresh, I might be able to swap that out for Missouri Bottoms if I sell some stuff in the bank. I just didn't want to shuffle my stuff around too much. And we're also going to be wearing Devote Boots in the Ring of the Gods imbued to boost our prayer bonus significantly, which means we'll be able to camp prayers, we won't have to do as much prayer flicking, and we'll make our super restores just last longer. In the inventory we have, of course, the Twisted Bow, the Missouri Top, an Anguish, and a Blowpipe. Alongside a bunch of super restores and Ceridoman Brews, the ratio we're going to have to swap around as we learn. Probably should have brought more brews. <laughs> Now, the Inferno, in a lot of ways, is very similar to the Fight Caves, just longer, and the monsters are more difficult. You have waves that progressively increase in difficulty, except this time you have to defeat 68 waves of monsters until you can finally take on the final boss, Zuck. Oh, we've done it. We've jumped down. I have no idea what's going on. Oh, there are some nibblers. It's our first monster. And a bat. 
Now starting off with the Nibblers, they are the weakest monster in the Inferno. They're easy to kill in a sense, but there are three of them and they are a high priority to kill. The pillars around the Inferno are important because you can use them to block other monsters. And without them, you are completely screwed. The Nibblers will slowly destroy the pillars and while you don't need any individual pillar to defeat the waves and make it to Zuck, you want to prioritize protecting them as much as you can. Now the bat is another pretty weak monster. It's pretty low priority to kill. It attacks with range, but doesn't do that much damage and is not that accurate. The next spirit we have the blob. The blob makes the inferno a lot more complicated just because of the way it attacks. Now essentially it switches between mage and ranged, but it does it by reading your prayer and then alternating into the other one. So you have to be switching between your protect range and magic with the right timing to take no damage. Now I'm sure there's tons of ways to deal with this, but I would just like roughly guess. I don't know. I wasn't trying to do anything too calculated. After like a second roughly, I would just switch to my other prayer and it worked pretty well, I guess so far. And the final monster you're gonna see in the early waves is the Meteor. This guy attacks with melee and hits very hard. Now the only special mechanic with this guy is he will dig towards you, essentially teleport to you, if he's unable to attack you for a while. Oh my god, so I actually lost the recording for my very first attempt. This is my third attempt. So if you're thinking, wow, this guy looks uh, pretty good at the Inferno for his first try. I don't think anyone's thinking that, but yeah, this wasn't my literal first attempt. Now the way you start the waves is you start off by ice barraging the nibblers in the middle. If you can get a second barrage off, great. Otherwise, don't do it. It's funny watching the recordings back of what you will do when you're panicking. Like, <laughs> I don't even know. I go ahead and bop the blob on the head with my nightmare staff because apparently I I don't have autocast on. And then I run around, nothing is safe spotted, everything's attacking me. I run back around the pillar, I actually almost survive, and then the pillar just destroys me. So we've gotten the hang of what the monsters do, and we've made it to the ranger waves. The ranger is simple, it literally just attacks you with range. It, it doesn't have any special mechanics except for the fact they can fucking whack you if you get close to it. So don't step right beside it. We've learned that the hard way a few times. So where we're standing is on the north pillar. I'm not sure exactly why this one's recommended, but I guess it gives you the most amount of room to maneuver and has some of the more favorable spawns. I mean, that's my guess. But hey, I learned something new. Um, I learned the blob safe spot, which is if you run right down this vertical here, the blobs get stuck in a perfect triangle and you can barrage them every time and only the ranger can attack you. So we finally made it to the waves with a major on it. The major is by far the most dangerous monster in the Inferno, or at least the Inferno waves. Incredibly accurate, has a really high max hit, and can revive any monster in the wave once. Which means if you don't kill the major quickly, the waves go on forever, but sometimes it's not easy to kill them. So because of that, you pretty much have to keep Prey Mage up the entire time that they can attack you. But you've made it the furthest I've ever made it. Um, we have 22 HP though and no supplies left, but I think this is wave 53. That said, I have no idea how to deal with this, even if I did have supplies. Okay, so I've had some success making it more often now to these later waves. I'm still pretty heavily brute forcing things, like I'll just DPS something down if I don't know how to solve the wave. We are getting to the point now where we're getting these pillar stacks, and that essentially is monsters that are stacked up like this. There's no way to really safe spot them and attack only one of them at a time. Now if you walk out, uh, you see that they both attack me at the same time, which means you can't pray against both of them. And we're dead. Okay, well one thing I've learned uh, in the last day is that there is something called phantom barraging. Now you can use this on the blobs in particular. Now essentially if you stand nearer to the back of the vertical and you manually cast Blood Barrage, you can get multiple barrages off even if the monster died. So we're back up to 99 HP, perfect. But uh, more exciting than that, we've made it by far to our new personal best. We're literally almost at the end. We've gotten some insane spawns to get to this point though. We have no supplies left. First issue, why the hell did I go in for a second barrage? 
One thing you'll notice is you can look at the experience when you barrage the nibblers. If there's three of them and you get 112 XP drop, that means they're all dead. I should in no way, shape, or form be running in for another barrage. That was stupid. And here I just literally freak out. I don't even know the best solve here. I, I uh, probably shouldn't have Augury on though. <laughs> now we got the Phantom Barrage down at least though. Okay, this setup's actually pretty good, except I make one pretty freaking big mistake here. Why in the hell am I killing this ranger? I really shouldn't have done that because, for one, the major was free, all I did was run around the corner, and then it resurrects the ranger and I just absolutely screwed myself. Lesson learned, always kill the major if you can first because, yeah, the waves are longer, then you end up with a stupid pillar stack again, which I still don't know how to deal with. Apparently you're supposed to attack one of them while running from this middle tile, then you can alternate your prayers, but that it's not working. And we're dead. Okay, we made it pretty deep again. This is wave 61. So I've learned this thing called corner trapping. See where the blob is? It actually can't attack from there. And we can physically block it, assuming we stand on this tile in particular. Well, that's pretty neat, except I immediately attack away, untrapping the blob and uh, completely screwing myself. So I've been watching some videos and I think I understand what I was doing wrong with the pillar stack solves. Okay, so I think I figured out what I was doing wrong. We need to stand on this middle tile of the pillar here. Now with the twist bow on, we attack the back monster and pray against them first. Now this will drag us around the pillar. The ranger will see us first, and then a tick later, the major will see us. Now as long as we immediately start alternating our prayers, we should be good. That's exciting. That was the first time I've successfully done that without taking a ton of damage. Okay, so let's watch a couple uh, more funny ways that I die. <laughs> okay, so this spawn is a little interesting. I go to corner trap the melee right away, which is a decent option, but I realize I can't attack any of the other threats on the west side of the arena, so it doesn't do me much good except for just buying me a little bit of time. Except I don't actually come up with any solution here except for running under the melee. I think my idea was to try to maybe just burst down the ranger and tank them and just hopefully get through it that way. But one thing that happens a lot is if you accidentally attack the melee while you're underneath him, you will get dragged out to the outside of the pillar and that will, <laughs> that kills you. And that has killed me a lot. Okay, here's another El Clasico. Um, Everything's great. Uh, the, the wave is solved. We're, we're totally fine. I'm killing a blob and I go to barrage it and I didn't wait for it to come into place. I actually barrage, I think, the major, which is slightly around the corner and that drags me to my demise. <laughs> so the first time we've done it, we've made it past all of the tough waves. We've made it to Jad. Jad, which I've killed a handful of times, shouldn't really be that difficult. And in my head, I'm thinking about triple Jads. That's that's the real issue. I've never tried that before. It's difficult and stressful. And uh, then we tank a Jad hit and I start to realize, oh no, I might not even make it to triple Jads. And uh, yeah, we don't. Uh, Meliar bops me and that was the end of this run. Very, uh, very sad. <laughs> Now, of course, in between all of my decent attempts, there are really stupid attempts as well, where I plank on wave 28. Progress is definitely not linear in the Inferno. What the hell is happening here? The fact that I even lived this long is impressive. I actually probably would have been fine if my pillar hadn't just exploded there. So Triple Jads isn't technically that hard. I mean, it's simpler than the waves. The reason it's hard is it takes so long to get to Triple Jads and you have to be completely focused. One mistake and you are dead immediately. Now the way I visualize doing this is as soon as you see the next Jad do their animation, switch prayers. Don't worry about the last Jad, just keep focusing on the next one, switching your prayer, and that, and that will give you the right timing. So in theory, it's not that hard. We just go mage, mage, mage. Okay, well, it's easy when they do the same attack. Now when they summon the healers, that's where things get a little tricky because you have to focus on two things at once. It only takes a split second and all of a sudden you've missed what one of the attacks was and you are dead immediately. That happened the first couple of times I tried triple jads and unfortunately there's not really a way to look up how to do it. You just kind of need to practice it. You get the hang of it quickly. It's just it takes a long time to get to that point. So we have exactly one restore in a quarter and uh, yeah, do you guys believe? <laughs> 
Now, of course not. I did not kill Zuck my first try with half HP and like one restore. But we finally made it to Zuck. That is really exciting. Now, we didn't really do a particularly good job of uh, even the first section of Zuck. Look, my shield is absolutely obliterated. Like, we're totally screwed. But hey, we made it through all the waves. We made it through triple jads. We had no supplies left. There was no hope. But we got some experience. I mean, we're getting further. Okay, so now for some more silly deaths, because of course I didn't make it back to Zuck my very first try again. Here I just, yeah, sit and die. I didn't really fight back or try to do anything. I, my brain just exploded, I guess, and gave up. So here we get actually a pretty good spawn. For some reason, I just take way too long to kill the Nibbler. But really, all I have to do is run around the corner and start tanking the Meteor, and I think, like, we're totally fine, but uh, I don't know, just... Lose my cool, and uh, well, that's that run over. Okay, so we made it back to Zuck, and you'll notice something right off the bat. My tile markers are gone. I have no idea what happened. I didn't realize until I started the Zuck fight. And, uh, well, yeah, I just kind of tried to quickly put down some tile markers where I think they go. So you see where I put them down? Yeah, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be relevant later. <laughs> But regardless, this is actually technically my personal best. We are able to bring Jad down with us as we die. So definitely some improvement. I honestly still have no idea what happened here. I somehow managed to reverse the directions of triple Jads. I do the yellow click of doom through the healers. And I guess I get meleeed and that somehow resets the timing. I don't know. I'm still really confused about this death to be honest. <laughs> All right, so you see this tile on the right here? It's one too far to the east. I think that's the safe tile, but it's actually one closer, which means when I go there and try to blow pipe down the ranger, I get freaking dragged out. And then that just immediately kills me. This is probably the run I have the best supplies on so far. We actually have like five brews five restores, we even brought our Faldor shield. I mean, we have everything we need to kill Zuck. Okay, Jad's dead. We still have pretty good supplies. We're gonna eat up though. Oh my god, that healed so much, but we did it. 500 HP, I think we're gonna get another set. Oh, I don't know. Oh, it's so soon. Alright, we're gonna tank some damage here.
Yes, we did it. Oh my god, our supplies were so close. <laughs> One dose of restore left. Holy shit. Whew, that was stressful. There it is, the infernal cape. Oh, I'm excited. Finally, people will respect me. But in all honesty, I am so excited we got that. That was probably the hardest thing I've not ever done. Okay, the hardest thing in RuneScape I've ever done. Oh, it looks so good. So all in all, I died 36 times trying to get this cape, uh, which is... I have no clue how much is average, but although the Inferno was frustrating at times, and by far the most difficult content I've ever tried in Old School RuneScape, I actually had a lot of fun doing it. It's like a puzzle, and I think it just kind of like poked the right part of my brains. You learn tons of new strategies to make it further and further more consistently, and yeah, it was actually just a lot of fun. I kind of want to go back and do it again sometime. Now, there's no doubt that the Inferno is incredibly hard, but it has this mystique around it where it seems impossible and only like the top 0.1% of people could ever do it, but clearly that's not the case because I have done it. If you take it slow, put in the time, I think anyone can get an Infernal Cape, and you never know, you might even have some fun along the way. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you uh, someday in the next main progress video. I mean, it might be coming sooner in this one. I sure hope anyway. <laughs>